For the longest time, I've been searching for a development platform. You'll notice on my channel that there are so many videos of me programming autonomous drones, but all the drones are always in simulation. I've been looking for such a long time to find the right platform online, but none of the platforms are ready to go off the shelf, always require a ton of assembly, and they're also super expensive usually. I've always felt that there's got to be a better platform than the $1,000 kits available today. A few months ago, I saw a video of a tiny whoop running Arty Pilot, and as soon as I saw that, I knew I had to try it. And I also felt that this platform would fulfill a lot of the criteria I've been looking for in a development platform. It would hopefully be light and able to take abuse, potentially be able to fly inside, and also be affordable. That video led me to look at the Flywoo GN745 all-in-one ESC and flight controller, and I gotta say, it is a game changer. The light controller and small form factor allows it to fit into the tiny whoop frame. With just a controller, a GPS, and a radio, I was able to make my tiny whoop that weighs only 77 grams. This platform has a number of advantages. First, for those of y'all who live in the United States, you'll be happy to know that you won't have to register this drone if you fly under the recreational regulation 44809. If you're flying under the recreational regulation, you also won't have to use remote ID. Plus, its small frame size makes it pretty resilient to crashes. Also, you're able to run the same scripts that we've made in the past to control the drone, whether that be the Pi Mavling scripts or the Mavros script. You'll notice that there is only one radio in this aircraft. This is a little unusual for most drones because most drones use an RC receiver for a dedicated RC controller and then also a telemetry link to get the Mavlink data down to the ground control station. I realized that I could save a lot of weight if I combine these two links together. So for this drone, I am sending my RC control over Mavlink, which allows me to eliminate the dedicated RC controller. I'm able to send the RC packets over Mavlink by using QGround Control's built-in joystick functions. I noticed that I could take this concept a little further if I was able to use my phone. So I bought a USB-C to micro USB cable to allow me to plug in the telemetry radio to my phone. From there, I was able to get the telemetry data into the QGround Control Android app, and that worked perfect. From there, I realized that I think I could take it another step further. I had noticed that sometimes people will connect joysticks to their phone over Bluetooth to play phone games. And I wondered if the same joystick functionality in QGround Control would also work on the phone. So I grabbed my Xbox One controller and Bluetoothed it to my phone. And sure enough, it worked with the Android QGround Control app. From there, I was able to set it up just as I had on my computer, and I was able to use the Xbox controller as my RC controller via the Mavlink telemetry stream. This is super handy because I now no longer need my laptop computer to fly the drone. The other component in this aircraft is the GPS, which it is crazy to say, but the GPS is actually the heaviest electronic component in this entire aircraft. The GPS weighs in at about 10 grams and takes up about 14% of the entire drone's weight. While that is pretty heavy, I can't really complain too much because it's really not that heavy, it's just that all the other components are really light. I've previously mentioned on this channel that I'm building the Intelligent Quads website to start drone simulations in the cloud so that you can easily test some of the scripts that we've been making on this channel. This drone offered a perfect opportunity to go ahead and put some of these workflows to the test. I want to show you one of the scripts that I developed to fly on the Arty Whoop drone. This script uses Pi Mavlink and generates a square pattern relative to where the drone takes off. I won't be going into the logic of how this script works today, but I do want to show you how I am testing the script using my website and then also how it works on the drone. Using the website, I can go in and configure my simulation Lucky for me, the Arty Whoop is running Arty Copter and Copter 4.40. So all I need to do is press start to start the simulation. So once the simulation starts, you can go ahead and copy the sim ID, and then you can use the Intelligent Quads client to then connect to the drone. And this will go ahead and make a Mavlink connection to the server where the simulation is running. So if I paste that in and hit connect, I should get a connection to cube ground control. This client is also splitting the connection. So some of the data is going over 14550 and I'm also sending on 51 and 52. So for the script, I'll be using 14551 and uh, subscribing to that. 
So now all I really need to do is run the script. So the script will connect. You'll notice the drone will start to take off. And then once it gets to the altitude of 10 meters, it'll fly forward and then it'll fly to the right. And then I'll fly back and finally return to launch. Now let me show you this on the drone. Here you'll notice that I'm going to run the exact same script on my laptop. My laptop is being connected via the sick radio that I mentioned before and I'm using a modified version of the IQSim client that I'll be releasing soon to grab a serial connection from the SICK radio and then broadcast that Mavlink stream over UDP just as the client does when you connect to a SIM via the web. So you saw the drone take off, go forward, turn to the right, come back, and then finally and complete low. the square pattern. It was extremely satisfying to see something this small be able to be scripted and fly autonomously in this way. It was also super rewarding to see the script that I had made in simulation be tested on a real drone. I think in the future I will continue to use this platform to test any navigation scripts that I might come up with, Disarmed. but I'm going to need a higher powered drone platform to do more advanced autonomy in the future. I've always dreamt of an affordable Artipilot drone that's ready to fly out of the box. While this isn't a pre-assembled drone, you can find instructions on how to build it on my GitHub. In addition, I have released my tuning parameters, which will hopefully save you a lot of time if you decide to make this aircraft. There certainly are some drawbacks that I've noticed with this frame. First of all, the cost ended up being a little bit more than I was expecting. This is namely due to the AIO being $140, which I think is actually probably comparable to a similar sized embedded flight controller as well as a similar sized all-in-one ESC. The other big cost is the MRO SICK radio uh, that costs $80. That is also quite expensive but I decided to go for it because I know the SICK radios are very reliable and have a lot of range. I think you could potentially get the weight and price down if you ended up going for a ESP32 as the telemetry module. Another drawback is the flight time. So the flight time is only three minutes, which is a little disappointing as well. I don't think I can simply increase the battery because the motors are getting quite hot when it lands. I think this is because the aircraft is already straining at the weight and adding any more weight would make this problem worse. Overall, I'm really happy with how this drone turned out and I intend on using it well into the future. Let me know if you guys think that you might be interested in making one of your own. Also let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing this as a pre-built frame. I can't make any promises, but I would definitely be interested in looking into this. That's all for now guys, I'll see you in the next one.